Good morning, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? Good, thank you. Um, so as Jim said, my name's Steve Wally, and I'm a principal program manager at Microsoft. Uh, I'm in the office of the CTO within Azure, and I work for John Gossman, who is our Linux Foundation board member. And what I want to talk to you today about is the, the growing culture around open source at Microsoft. And it's really a story about how did we get from Steve Ballmer in 2001 calling Linux a cancer to having contributed to the, the Linux kernel for nine years now, almost a decade. And literally as a company now we have thousands and thousands of employees that are active on GitHub every day. And so this is really, it, it's a story about culture though. And I, I wanna make sure people understand that it's culture, not strategy. Because lots of folks are concerned. Uh, we often get the question, you know, is this what, this is the current strategy from Microsoft. The way it's often phrased is, what happens if Satya Nadella leaves? Uh, the less comfortable way it's phrased sometimes is, what happens if Ballmer comes back? Um, and really, so I need to get you to a place where you might understand how this culture has been evolving. And so what, what changed? Well, certainly our industry changed. We're in a place now where with the cloud and the rise of the cloud, all cloud infrastructure projects are open source licensed. And the workloads that we're running on the cloud at this point, so all of the artificial intelligence work, all the machine learning and deep learning work, all of the data science work, all of that technology has a foundation of open source licensed projects at this point. Our customers have certainly changed. Um, Jim, Jim was kind, he said I'd been around this for a couple of decades, it's actually pushing on, on three now. Um, if you had have asked a customer uh, 15 years ago, do you have open source in your shop? The CIO would have said no. The CIO would have been wrong. But they wouldn't have an understanding of what it meant in their shop and for their operation at the time. At this point, if you turn around and you ask the average CIO, do you have open source in your shop? A lot of them are nuanced enough to know what they're buying, how they're using it, uh, whether or not they've got employees that are participating in open source projects. And then Microsoft has changed. We're at a point in history where we can't hire a developer that isn't open source savvy at some level. Uh, whether they're fresh out of school or they've been working for the last decade or two decades, they have some knowledge and often participation in key open source projects. And really, it, I, I guess I want to bring you back to how did we get here? There is, there is an almost inevitability to how we got here. Uh, Microsoft has always been a company by, of, and for developers, right back to the original founders. They were developers building tools to make other developers better. And at this point in history, developers love open source. Now, that's, that's kind of a trite statement. Uh, a lot of you have heard me rattle on about the fact that we've been collaborating on software since we've been writing software. I can bore you with stories that go all the way back to 1950. And in 1980, after 30 years of collaboration on a network that was, you know, had tape-sized packets uh, and conference schedule latency, we ended up in a place where the US Congress applied copyright law to computer software. And what you saw was 18 years then of experimentation with licensing to allow us to continue to collaborate the same way we had for the previous 30 years. And that culminated in the open source definition. And that stood us well for the last 20 years, and I hope it stands well in its current form for the next 20 years. So why do developers collaborate? Well, we collaborate because writing good software is hard work. And we get better by collaborating. The software itself gets better, and we as, as developers get better and learn from each other. And that's why this all works. Our current CEO uh, is also a developer and is kind of carrying that forward. Uh, we did have another CEO between them um, who was not a developer. He did say famous things about developers once on stage. He's very supportive of developers. But with Satya's background, Satya's tried to capture his vision of the culture of Microsoft in Hit Refresh. And in there, he tells a story that actually, I think, sets the, the tone for a lot of what you're seeing. Uh, a number of years ago, he and another uh, few, few executives came out of a customer meeting, and the realization was 
that at this point in history, Linux would have to be a first party operating system on Azure. And that that would come though with a profound cultural challenge for the company, the company that had been the Windows company for decades at that point. And so this has been that journey of, of seeing things continue to rise. Now, this isn't just the executives. You know, culture comes from the top, revolution comes from the bottom. But this isn't just the executives that are kind of pushing down from the top. Uh, Anders Heilsberg is a distinguished engineer at Microsoft. He was the creator of Turbo Pascal, and then he was the architect uh, for C Sharp and .NET. Uh, four years ago, he started work on TypeScript. And TypeScript is a type safe version of JavaScript that compiles down to pure JavaScript so it can run anywhere that JavaScript does. And he started it as an open source project. And over this last number of years, I guess it's five years now, um, Anders is convinced he will never do anything not as an open source project again. He just feels that TypeScript is so much better, and he talks about this, that it's so much better not having been purely his creation inside of Microsoft that other language experts around the planet have contributed to it, primary users have contributed to it. It's just a better language because the open source community around TypeScript has made it so. Um, you've seen lots of news around our, our growing um, engagement with the Linux community. At this point in history, roughly half the VMs on Azure are running Linux. And 60% of the solutions in the Azure marketplace are Linux-based. Uh, we've got strategic partnerships with uh, major companies across the spectrum that, whose products and services are all based on open source projects. You can see this kind of continuation in the container ecosystem. Uh, again, this is a place where Microsoft continues to build partnerships with the key companies that care about container, the container eco ecosystem. Um, we continue to engage in those projects that are key in this space. And really, it, it's, it's, become a, it's becoming a structured process at Microsoft, the way we think about it. We end up in a situation where we will, uh, we've recognized we have to enable a lot of these projects in, in the simplest form, just to enable them in the Azure space. You know, that work started around Linux, but it continues with lots of other technology. Um, we also integrate open source projects into our own products and services on Azure. So that's why you know, we have a managed Postgres service. I have managed MySQL service. Kubernetes shows up as AKS on Azure. And then we continue to release uh, lots of innovative technology as open source, licensed as open source, and try and build those communities that make it better. Um, it's not just things like TypeScript. TypeScript um, we've, Visual Studio Code was a bit of a surprise to us. Uh, VS Code was a reimagining of Visual Studio, but let's do it as an open source project. Uh, a couple of different surveys have uh, let us know that it is the most popular editing environment in the Go community, and it's the most popular editing environment in the JavaScript community. The thing that was kind of disconcerting for us was that was not on Azure and not on Windows. And so we continue to engage in interesting ways in these places. And lastly, we continue to contribute back to the projects that we're using, because that's fundamentally the kind of the economic imperative is, as engineers building products that carries us forward. And that leads us into an ecosystem where we've continued, as Jim said, we are platinum members of the Linux Foundation, um, something that many of us never believed we would actually say out loud. Um, but we're also uh, members of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. We're members of Eclipse. We support the Apache Software Foundation. And then the ecosystem, as you broaden that out to partners, we're there with all of the key players that care about open source in their products and services. And we continue to take that as a set of investments that are meaningful to us for where our customers are telling us we have to invest if we're going to make Azure the best place for their computing workloads. The last place, I guess, the, the other view that I would try and uh, bring to it, um, it really did start with our engagement in Linux. And it, the interesting thing, I mean, we all love to take a ding at Mr. Balmer, but the work nine years ago started while it, the company was still run by Steve. 
And at that time, for us to begin that work, he had to support it. And this was work that's been driven for the last nine years. And it means that we get to a place where the platform enablement, you saw it grow from just enabling Linux to actually run on Hyper-V into these next places where we had to take it. And then we continue to go along with all of the, uh, these open source projects that we were launching. Invariably, either we brought them to Linux or partners in that open source community brought them to Linux with us. And so that's been kind of part of this growing learning for Microsoft in this growing open source culture. And then finally, you end up in a place where, yes, we're reflecting this back out in our engagement and the way we take projects and turn them into products uh, and, and have learned from our partners in this space. Um, we started participating in GitHub, as everybody has to so sooner or later. Um, our growing contributions in that space uh, year on year led us to a place where finally we ended up, um, as everybody's well aware of at this point, we're in the process of acquiring GitHub. Uh, the stated uh, mission right now is to not mess with GitHub. So this isn't something where all of a sudden you're gonna be seeing Microsoft ads on GitHub or anything like that. Um, again, you go back to that deep culture of Microsoft. Microsoft is a company by, of, and for developers. And at this point in history, the place that developers live in the open source community is on GitHub. But we've also ended up in a space where uh, we've begun to participate in ways that, are, that would be meaningful if indeed Microsoft was a proper Linux company now. And so recently you've seen the announcements where we've joined the Open Innovation Network and uh, the Lot Network. And so I want to leave you at this point with a quote from Satya Nadella, because he does continue to lead, lead this uh, growing culture of open source and openness at Microsoft. And that really is, judge us by the actions that we're taking right now. Uh, judge us by these actions as we go forward. And that, I think, is the best that we can hope for and the best that we can ask as a participant in this broader community. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time this morning, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day at the conference. Thank you.